Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we're here at GDC 2016. I'm joined by Wes McDermott and he is working at Algorithmic who makes Substance, which is an asset authoring tool basically for game companies. Before getting to this discussion, all this content is brought to you by Raw Fury's Goner Platformer Game, which you can see on the screen now. So, Wes, with the audience we have, it's all gamers, but they're interested in how this stuff is made. Behind the scenes, what sort of tools, obviously you make and work with Substance, what sort of tools do developers have to use on the art side to create the assets for their games? Well, it could be a wide range of tools. Uh, as an artist myself, I use pretty much everything I can think of. I've uh, used uh, Maya for probably model creation. also use uh, the Foundry's Moto software a great deal. Uh, also, you're going to use like maybe a sculpting app. So some of our customers will use uh, ZBrush mainly, or you might see some use 3D code. But uh, basically, it's kind of hard to find like a one-stop shop for you know, all the asset creation. Like, not one program is going to do everything perfectly. So it's kind of, as an artist, you got to have like a tool bag or a toolbox full of stuff. So for me, it's, you know, I got Maya, ZBrush, Moto, and then of course Substance for texturing. Right. So with texturing specifically, this is one everyone talks about, even on the consumer side. Obviously, you can see textures in everything that's modeled. Uh, so in games, you know, you look at a character, like these guys behind us, they're all textured. What goes into making a good texture, and how do you balance that? versus the load leveling on system resources? Well, uh, yeah, that's kind of, it's it's tough to really get in, you know, on a high level of that, but I, I think that we're really seeing kind of, you know, a, a change in the way textures are authored, uh, especially with the, uh, you know, with PBR, you know, physically based materials, and that's what, at Algorithmic, that's what we really specialize in. And so, you know, the question of what goes into it, I would say, you know, understanding, you know, the physical material that you're trying to simulate, you know, all the surface attributes and typically how I say that, like wood, all the, what are the surface attributes that make up wood? And when you think about that in terms of physically based rendering, you're thinking, well, okay, what's base color, roughness, normal, AO, those kind of things. And so when you look at it from that sense point, you are going through the process of, you know, having to know a bit about the material, but you're also having to know how that material needs to be authored in a physically based environment. So yeah, a lot goes into it. I think you also asked about the, the load time and things like right. that. Um, with uh, a lot of the games that you see that are starting to come out that are going to be physically based, um, that, that has a, a tax on the GPU, uh, much greater than what we've seen before. But you know, as GPUs are increasing, uh, physically based games are going to be more you know, the norm of what we see. Right. So um, yeah, there is that, that trade off of that, you know, you do have to have, you know, more shader compute, things like that. But at the same time, you know, you can get a much physically accurate looking texture with, with very little effort. And one thing we, we were talking about the other day with one of your other team members here was just all the maps. So we hear the words normal map, specular map, diffuse, all these relief. What do these words mean at a, a top level? What, you know, what goes into the creation of assets? Yeah, on a top level, the way I like to refer to that is um, I usually say when you have all these map types, they're basically going to be uh, inputs into the, you know, channel inputs into the shader. So I say basically when you look at these maps, think of them, the, they're just describing the surface attributes of a material. So if you look at, say, like again, example of wood again, uh, there's going to be a base color, which is like re representing diffuse reflected color. Uh, then you're going to have normal map, which is going to be kind of like the rough surface, you know, it's going to uh, describe surface detail. You're going to have like a roughness map, which is going to you know, describe the, the micro surface of how you know light is going to get scattered and things like that. And you know things like that, like the roughness map, those are utilized by a shader to simulate what we see in the real world. Because obviously we can't you know simulate something like that in real time with right. the technology we have now. But yeah, and and the process of what goes into that, it really depends on the tool set. And I and I. I think, you know, not only as a, an employee of Algorithmic, but as an artist myself, that's where the Substance tool set really um, excels because, you know, we think in terms of creating textures as a full material. So in traditional workflows, you would think, like you mentioned, okay, I'm working on diffuse, I'm working on specular, I'm work and you would think of these as separate entities and you would try to pull them in and render and just, uh, I guess it looks right, I'm kind of guessing these values and so on. But with uh, PBR and with our Substance tool set, you're not only thinking about these separated textures anymore. You're thinking about, I want a material like wood or metal or something. And so you're viewing this in real time as you work and, in your, and the guesswork has been removed because with physically based uh, rendering, you know, 
the, the concepts of what the material is, is based on scientific measured data. It's not something that, you know, as an artist, I don't have to go look up these values. I don't have to know, like, well, this is, you know, I just know that these values are going to be what I need them to be because, you know, they're, they're calibrated values and I can use those and metal's going to look like metal and wood's going to look like metal in all lighting conditions. So is there, we were looking at some new NVIDIA technology coming out soon and we were talking with them specifically about shadow maps versus doing something else, like maybe using voxels to generate some kind of shaders or something in the game, shadows in the game. Are there instances where technology from uh, plugins or other sources can be used rather than doing sort of the, all the mapping manually? Or are you able to automate any process of the art creation? Oh yeah, you're definitely able to automate processes of the art creation. Um, a, lot of, a lot of that can be done through you know, Substance as well. Uh, where you know some of the items that you're going to have, like you have a mesh, you're going to bake some information about it. Like you might bake normal curvature, uh, ambient occlusion, all these things, and you can feed those into a material. And for instance, you can say, well, in the occluded areas, you know, I don't want dirt to fall and things like that. So when you're thinking of it in terms of a procedural texture, you can have uh, maps that were baked uh, using GPU bakers uh, that are going to feed that in to control how the procedural effects are going to work. So uh, those type of processes can be fully automated. And one of our tool sets is that we allow command line um, batch processing of all these map bakings. So we've had several studios that use our tools in, in really awesome ways where um, they've had tech artists would set up a material, uh, they would basically run it through a, just a system uh, in-house program they made that's gonna, you know, they feed in the mesh, bakes all of the maps, uh, it takes the substance material, it feeds in the maps, the substance material regenerates the textures based on the mesh data, which is the baked maps, and then outputs textures straight to the engine. So the artist would sit down, he hits a button, it generates everything, he switches his chair over to his other monitor, he's inside his engine and testing the material. So is, is a similar process used for LOD scaling where if we, if we change mesh quality or something in a game, in the game settings, obviously you see a pretty real difference in some games. Is that manually created, these different qualities, or is that part of the automation process? Uh, it can be part of the automation process. And uh, with that too, you, you, there's, there's instances where you kind of have to rebake certain things depending on how much that changes. But in that case, uh, you know, you're going to be looking at it in terms of like overall like silhouette of the object, you know. So like the normal map, you know, it's still going to be able to be utilized from the high res bake and the curvature. So you're not going to have to like rebake those things. Very cool. And uh, we'll, we'll close out here, but why don't you provide everyone an understanding of what Substance does for, uh, for the developers and maybe some examples of developers who use it. Okay, yes. Uh, well, here at GDC, we've got uh, a lot of presentations that are, that are going on right now. And so uh, the presentation is getting ready to start here in a few minutes. Uh, we've got uh, the team from Rainbow Six who utilize that on Siege. Uh, we've got uh, several uh, amazing artists from Naughty Dog who are presenting you know, how Substance was used on Uncharted 4. Uh, so a lot of AAA studios, uh, Black Ops 3 was recently uh, used with Substance Painter. Uh, so we have a lot of these AAA studios that are um, you know, really embracing our tool set because it has, it has the ability to be automated and, and be able to generate these textures in a very quick way. Well, thank you for joining me, Wes. Of course, check out links in the description below for full content. And thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>